Okay, okay, I'm aware. It's been a while since I've talked about Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I know it's been a hot minute. I've just been very busy. I'm sorry, you guys. The series was available on December 20th, which was my birthday. And it's everything I ever wanted. Like, great characters, hilarious scenes, relatable moments. And a huge success from the original movies that were not very adapted that well. But hey, I still love them. So for you guys, I'll be looking at the first two episodes and see if it holds up, man. I mean, this is not very much of a surprise, but it did. Great performances, amazing talents from the cast and crew. Like, I'm not trying to waste anyone's time. Let's just get into the two episode premiere of Percy Jackson. We meet our main character, Percy Jackson, who struggles with ADHD and dyslexia, and he is struggling in school, gets bullied, and it sucks. Apparently, he's been seeing mythological creatures like at a young age due to all the stories his mom told him, but everyone else just thinks he's crazy, nerd, loser, you know, all the classic mean names in the book. So, after going on a field trip and chilling with his best friend, mind you, they are just minding their own business and just talking, this annoying maniac named Nancy Bubba Fett. Normal name, by the way, no questions. Percy asked. uses his powers on her, and then she ends up in the fountain. And then we get the Mrs. Dodds and Percy scene. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Like, uh, this is one of the most iconic scenes of the books. Uh, I felt like they sh they could have taken this inside. I don't believe they should have been outside. Okay, I, I'm just I'm just being honest. I mean, I, I like the scene. It was all right. I just I just feel like they should have been inside. I just feel like it worked well in the books. Them being outside just makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it was a way to show off the mist or whatever. But they should have took in the fight inside just, just like they did in the movies at least the movies got that part right so after literally vaporizing his pre-algebra teacher nobody remembers mrs dodds and percy gets kicked out of school because grover's a snit we meet percy's stepfather gabe and he, he sucks we also meet percy's mother who is the coolest mom virginia cole was perfectly casted as sally jackson like she literally looks exactly like her and embodies the character very well which is why it works very much to escape gabe's annoyingness they run away to montauk to chill out percy tells his mom what happens and then she tells him about his origins which kind of surprised me because this did not happen in the book she's trying to explain but percy's misunderstanding because he thinks she's just calling him stupid but then grover comes reveals his goat looks the person i just want to say if i were percy i would be losing my freaking mind so they leave the cabin and they try to head to camp camp half blood but then this thick booty minotaur comes out of nowhere and tries to track them down due to percy being a demigod it all seems like tragedy because they crash their car into the minotaur and then they get into a crash themselves and r.i.p to gabe's car so grover leaves leads them to camp but sadly sally jackson cannot join them because she's a human and after making grover swear to take care of her son great scene by the way she tries to distract the minotaur but then oh no mommy gets vaporized gosh darn it man i could I just feel that scene man i can feel the sadness in his face enraged percy uses riptide and tries to take down the minotaur but after the sword gets knocked out of his hands he has to think fast so he goes on top of the minotaur and stabs him in the head i believe in the books he stabbed him in the chest i think but regardless it was still a good scene so after blacking out he ends up in a mysterious place which we all know but you know if you're a newcomer into the series you're not gonna know what this place is episode two i become supreme lord of the bathroom follows up after percy gets hurt very badly and ladies and gentlemen she says it you drool when you sleep you have no idea how much I've been waiting for that scene. So Percy finally wakes up, talks to Grover for a little bit, and their whole conversation is basically, yo, Percy, I'm sorry that your mother died. I appreciate your forgiveness, Grover, but I'm Batman. That's basically how their whole conversation goes. So after running into Dionysus, Jason did an incredible job, by the way. Percy finds out who he is thanks to Grover, and we also meet Mr. Brunner, aka Chiron. Well, again, because Percy knew Chiron as Mr. Brunner. You guys understand what I mean. Before I keep on reviewing, I just want to say, like, the conversation between Grover, Percy, and Dionysus nice is like everyone going back and forth with each other their dialogue was incredibly executed in a way that felt relatable i feel like me talking to my friends or me talking to an adult so after talking to percy for a little bit Karan gives him a tour i will be honest camp half blood does look good i mean some of the complaints i've heard about it was it's too green or uh, which doesn't make any sense because it's in a freaking forest so after more walking and talking Karan explains that if a godly parent claims you then you're their child man these gods have so many child support to pay since percy is unclaimed he has to be in the hermes cabin i feel bad for those kids who haven't been claimed by their godly parent yet percy ends up meeting luke the actual leader of the cabin and hermes son yeah looks like they'll get along just fine we then cut back to grover as he figures out that percy's mom isn't in fact dead but chiron and mr d keep grover from telling percy the truth so that's that we also meet clarice daughter of Ares, the war god who just causes crap for percy for no apparent reason we then get a montage i'm trying to see what Percy's good at so he can know who his godly parent is so he can get claimed things don't really work out 
We then get a nice deep emotional scene from Percy, and I must say, Walker Skull boasts of the show. This is why he is a perfect Percy Jackson. Whoever doubted this man for a second can go suck an ass. We then see Clarice and her friends bullying Percy because Clarice thinks he's a liar about the Minotaur. So they decide to give my boy a swirly. And he ends up using his powers. I mean, dude, you, I mean, come on. You, you could have at least knew you were a son of a sea god. At least. Come on now, bro. We then meet our wise girl, Annabeth Chase, bro. Like, the confidence Leah has in this character. Yeah, she, she was perfectly casted as Annabeth Chase. I, I can see what Rick was talking about. Luke talks a little bit about Annabeth and his backstory. And we get a Thalia reference. Let's go. It's now time for them to play Capture the Flag. And that Percy is oblivious to all this because he's never played a game like this and annabeth and percy are put together and capture the flag and it's nice to see their conversation you know the beautiful start of percibeth so after talking for a bit annabeth legit just ditches percy using the invisible cap she has and clarice comes and tries to get her revenge on what percy did to her and her friends i gotta lie everyone did a great job of the fight scenes the cinematography the performances like when clarice yo no like dude that scared the crap out of me she's the bad one this scene must have been very fun to shoot like i would not keep it in bro i laugh my butt off and have a great time but that scene must have have taken a lot of hard work so i really appreciate them for working hard and doing this for us like they, they didn't have to do that man i mean they do because you know they, get, they make that bang but, but still they, I, I really appreciate them for putting their all into this scene like th this scene was a great watch we then see annabeth again and i know what she was trying to do i feel like she was just trying to examine what he could do what he was capable of she pushes him into the water and what we have now is the most iconic scene in the history of television his father is Poseidon. I mean, not that much of a surprise. What other Greek person has the power of water? So he goes inside the Poseidon cabin and bro looks immaculate. And the episode ends with him pretty much being offered a quest. So that's pretty awesome. I can't wait for episode three. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Percy Jackson and the Olympians. God, I you don't know how long I've been waiting for this. I mean, I grew up watching the movies like I've mentioned before in the past. But to have a good, amazing, faithful adaptation, which they should have done in the first place. I mean, hey, second time's a charm. Just puts a smile on my face. Guys, if this series does well, we, this could end up like the next Harry Potter. The series has been a long time in the making, and sometimes I look back at my previous Percy Jackson videos. I mean, th th those are great memories that I've made, and now that it's finally here, it just, yeah, I just, I just don't know what to say, man. It's just so good. And those of you guys who are still complaining in 2023, like, g g get help, man. And that is all I have for you guys today. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to spread that love, spread that positivity, because it lets YouTube know that I'm worth watching. The socials will be in the bottom down below. And uh, yeah, peace.